Hi, uh, I'm Art Bergeron and welcome to this seminar of the series of seminars that I do um, actually once a month uh, regarding a bunch of issues involving my good friends Frank and Mary. Uh, this seminar is about moving. It's about um, moving. We're going to talk about it. So Frank and Mary, we, you've, all, you've all talked, we've talked about Frank and Mary many times um, and we've talked about in, in this seminar they're 80 years old so they're older. Uh, they have their three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal has been very simple for their whole lives. They want to live in their house until they die and they want to be buried in the backyard. And I would always tell you those two things. But actually, in this presentation, we're going to talk about two more. They want to live a happy life and they want to avoid spending on a nursing home. Uh, for folks who come in, and I, I see nothing but seniors. I have no clients under age 55. My median client age is 74. When people come in, by the time they're 80, when they're in their 70s and 80, the issue of making sure that they're not spending a lot of money on nursing home care keeps rising on the list of things that they want to talk about. So I want to talk about um, Frank and Mary and keep that in mind. So Frank and Mary, because and, one of the issues is, what if you can't do all four of those things? What if you can't live in your house until you die while at the same time living a good life? And then you want to make sure that if you possibly can, whatever you're doing, that you're avoiding having to pay for a nursing home, which no one wants to go to. I get that. You're telling me everybody comes in, you're never going to go to a nursing home. I have been told that now. I have been practicing law for um, this year, 45 years. I've been told that for 45 years. I have yet to see anybody that like just shoots themselves so that they don't go to the nursing home. So, so don't you know, discount the fact that you need to pe make that part of your plan. Okay, so what if you can't do all four? Now last month we talked a lot about planning to stay home because Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die. And we talked about figuring out how you could make your home as safe as possible, um, figuring out how you can budget for future repairs for the house, how you could make it accessible, and also how you could budget to save enough money so that if you um, were at home but you just needed more care because you because either you had fallen down and now you're at home and you just kind of can't get around the way you could get around uh, or because you know, maybe you're having some memory issues maybe you need somebody that's just going to help you out more at, more at the house we tried figuring out how you could budget to stay at home so in this the, the question though that I always ask people uh, in these situations is so is it just time to move I know you don't want to move I know you plan to not move but is it time to move? Um, or alternatively, by the way, is it time for someone to move in? Because there's always that other possibility. So today we're going to talk about those two things. Uh, if it's time to move, um, or you're even considering it, how do you evaluate that in comparison to, to staying? So in, in all of this planning from now on, once you're, once you're 80, you really need to build into your planning, planning for protection of your assets in the event that you need nursing home care. And now, you know, once again, I've been doing this for 45 years. Um, a lot of people have gone to a nursing home. No one's ever just been thrown out of a nursing home onto the street. You're, that is never going to happen. Um, you, once, you have, once your assets are really limited, uh, you'll be able to qualify for MassHealth, the Massachusetts name for the, med, med, the Medicaid program. Once you've done that, your income from your Social Security of your pension will go to the nursing home. Mass Health will pay all the rest. The issue is never, are you going to get thrown out in the street? The issue is, is the money that you have saved all of your life and probably figured that you wanted to have go to your kids, instead going to go to the nursing home? The answer to that for 100% of my clients has been no. So the question is, can you kind of plan in order to avoid that possibility? So broadly, um, here, let me give you a sense of who we're talking about here. Um, and we're going to be talking about two different situations because I actually do these presentations in two different places. We're going to talk about Frank and Mary uh, uh, in Metro West, um, where I do a lot of presentations. And, and, and in that situation, we're going to assume that, fr that they own a house that's worth about $400,000. Frank has an IRA worth $200,000, and they have joint savings worth about $200,000. So they have $800,000 in all. We're going to assume that Frank and Mary Frank on, is on Social Security, he's making about 2000 a month. Mary's getting half of his, she's making $1,000 a month. 
That's our assumption in Metro, on, in Metro West. On the islands, however, on Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket, the incomes are the same. Because for the, for the vast majority of the clients that I work with, I'm, you know, there is this myth for you, those of you who are watching, if you're on the islands, that people are rich who live on Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket. Well, of course, that's not the case. As you all know, the money flies in, the money flies out. But most people who live on the islands have pretty, you know, pretty typical incomes and therefore pretty typical retirements. The only issue is the house, right? The house. Remember what you paid for that house? No, now what's it worth, right? So in those situations, we're assuming that the house is worth $800,000 instead of $400,000, but we're assuming the income is the same. So first question, this comes up a lot. Remember this Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. So can Mary Jr. move in at this point to help you out? You've got some physical problems. You're having some trouble making meals. Maybe you've got some memory issues. Maybe Mary is single. Uh, at, at least her kids are grown up. If you're 80, chances are Mary's kids are, are, are grown up. Um, it, it, maybe she's got a husband who doesn't want to move in with you, but the, you know, the question is, is, is this a possibility? So let's just kind of talk about some things that you might want to think about in that situation. First, you may want to have Mary move into you, but you don't want to have her move into like your bedroom, you know? So you, you, wanna, you want to see if you can structure your house so that Mary, who is helping you out, can also have a place where she can be private, so that, and while you still have a place where you can be private. So the question is, can, is there, you wanna to talk to an architect, is there an addition that you can do, right? Um, can you create a separate a unit for Mary? Does that create some zoning problems? You're gonna to have to talk about your, your, some, some local officials, you know, most, most houses, you can't do that because that's creating a separate unit and it turns the house into a two family unit. You wanna kind of figure those pieces out. You wanna make sure if you possibly can that she's got her own bathroom, right? Um, on the islands, for folks who, uh, um, who are out in Metro West, I talk about the situation on the islands where most communities are zoned so that you can actually build two houses on your lot. People are like astonished by this, right? But on the islands, this often is, the, this problem has already been solved because if you have the money, you can just have a separate structure so that you can have your daughter there um, while at the same time she's not there all the time. Now, as a mass health matter, and I'm gonna try to highlight the mass health things throughout. If, you're, if your daughter is moving in, and, and you may very well be wanting to pay her because she may not be able to afford to just kind of move in on her own. Remember, any payments to a child are presumed to be payments for, are, are, are presumed to be actually gifts to that child for mass health purposes, because it's assumed that the child who is helping you is helping you simply out of love and affection, right? Which they may be, she may be helping you, of course, out of love and affection, otherwise she wouldn't have moved in. But the point is, if she can't afford to move in and you need to help her out, what you need to do is do a pre, an agreement, a written agreement with your daughter or other relative who is, because the same rule is gonna to apply to other relatives, with whoever is moving in, making it clear what the deal is, uh, and, and ideally you also will get an estimate from a geriatric care manager um, so, uh, as to how many hours of care you may need given your current physical condition or your current mental condition, right? And then have that contract be that the services are gonna be provided on an hourly basis, and then have Mary keep track. It's just something you really wanna be aware of up front. How about, and now that Mary has moved in, the question is, well, if Mary's doing this, um, especially if you're not paying her, are you making some kind of deal with the house? Oh, Mary's providing us with so much care, we're gonna give her the house when we die, right? Well, a couple of observations on that, right? If, you know, obviously, if you wanna do that, make sure you put that in your will um, so that after you die, there isn't an argument among the children about all of this. What you may wanna do in, as an alternative to putting it in the will is to actually transfer an interest in the house to Mary, a so-called remainder interest. That is the interest in the house that starts after you die while keeping a life estate, that is control of the house while you're alive. One of the advantages to this, it's still, for tax purposes, gives, will give Mary the same benefit that when you die, the so-called tax basis of the house will jump to the date of death value. So if she sells it, she'll be able to sell it capital gains tax-free, right? Um, well, and, and for mass health purposes, um, 
Yeah, but for mass health purposes, you should be aware that if you make a transfer to Mary of the house or of an interest in the house, that transfer is so subject to the so-called, the, the famous five-year look-back period. So if you transfer an interest to the house, you need nursing home care within five years, that the house is going to have to come back. But five years after you've transferred that house to, or, or that interest in the house to Mary, that transfer is no longer countable or lienable if you eventually need to nursing home care. Finally, remember, if you end up needing nursing home care, even if you haven't done any of this, if Mary can demonstrate that she was with you providing care for you for at least two years prior to the day that you went into the nursing home, and that as a result of that care, you didn't need to go to a nursing home, then Mass Health, you, she can, she can, or you can, when you apply for Mass Health, you can get the so called caretaker child exemption, and, and, and whereby Mass Health is required to allow you to transfer the house to Mary at that time, even if you did no prior planning. Next possibility, moving in with Mary. That's another possibility. So Mary has said, well, you know, mom and dad, you know, we got some extra room in the house. Many, many of the ch many children now actually kind of design their houses with this in mind because they know that this could be coming. So once again, but many of them don't. So once again, before you just move in, figure this out, right? Make sure there's room in this house for you. You know, I mean, you're moving into their house. Have they still got kids, right? They probably have a life that's gonna be very different once you've moved in. So can you, can you designate space in the house for yourself? Maybe you, wanna add a, maybe you wanna add a room. Maybe you wanna build a house on the lot if you're on the islands. Remember, but you wanna check out what the zoning is. You wanna check out the cost of that addition. And you should be aware <clears throat> that you wanna really document this, this, this work very carefully because otherwise Mass Health is going to consider that any of the money that you spent on this addition or gave to, to, to your daughter in order to do this addition is going to have been considered a gift for Mass Health purposes if you need to apply for Mass Health within five years after you made those, you did that addition and did those transfers. So you're going to be wanting, among other things, Mass Health may be saying, well, you know, there was this, there was this, you, there was an addition and certainly it benefited. Um, it benefited um, Mary, or it benefited Frank and Mary, but it also added a tremendous amount of value to the house. So kind of what's the balance? So you want to get that part really clear. An alternative to doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that Frank and Mary could buy an interest in the property. They could buy a so-called life estate. That is the right to live in the property for the rest of their lives. And there's a special mass health rule that says if they buy a life estate, and live in the property for at least a year following the day on which they bought the life estate, then that purchase is not considered to have been a gift. Now, the issue though is you're gonna to need to make sure that you value the life estate correctly. You cannot simply say that you're buying a life estate for the full value of the property, even though you're going in and you're 80 years old, because the life estate's only gonna last until you die. And if you're 80, your actuarial life expectancy is about 10 years, right? So you're going, to want, you're, going to be wanting to, you're going to need to value that life estate. Finally, uh, if you're not doing the life estate, uh, um, one of the alternatives you may want to consider is paying room and board. Um, getting a, a real estate broker to value, what is the value to you um, of having not only a roof over your head, you know, and very kind of often a very nice roof over your head, but also, if, they, if, if, if your daughter is preparing your meals for you or buying the food, then really what you're getting is not just rent, you're getting room and board, room and the, the food, right? So that could be a very substantial value, often valued at, say, $3,000, $4,000 a month, right? So it may be, depending on what the, how the numbers work, that it works better for you to be paying um, your daughter room and board every month as opposed to buying a life estate or doing something else. Uh, buying another house. Um, many people will say, well, you know, I just, I just want to, my current house isn't safe. I mean, my, my wife and I live in a, a terrific house, um, which is actually three, it's a wonderful old Victorian and it's three stories and it's 3,000 square feet. And the distance from the first floor to the third floor to our bedroom is 30 stairs. 
it may very well be that at some point we don't want to have 30 stairs to get to the bat to get to the to the uh, bedroom. So if you're thinking of buying another house, great. Remember though, if you want to do that, simplify. Don't go from one big house to another. Make sure that the house is safe. If you're going to get another house, make sure it's on one floor, right? And, and when you're thinking about the house, and you, you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, how can I ever afford to buy a house, you know, in this market? Well, interestingly, and, and you know, obviously you can go to the bank and see if you want to just get a, a mortgage on the house or, or, a, or a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Um, but also reverse mortgages are, are now often used by seniors to buy a house, right? So think about that. If you're 80, you can get a reverse mortgage equal to over 50% of the value of the house, right? So you go buy the house, you get a reverse mortgage for 50%, and remember on the reverse mortgage, there's no monthly payment that is due. The, the entire amount of the, of the reverse mortgage is only due after you die, or actually a year after you die, or after you sell the house. So that may be a real, a real possibility, okay? And, and, and finally, you may be wanting to really look at purchasing a condominium or a townhouse in a retirement community. These, those are communities that are really, they're not gonna provide you as, assistance. It isn't like living in an assisted living community, but, they're, gonna, but they're, they're typically designed for seniors. So you're gonna have less problem with handicap accessibility, with getting into the bathroom, with, with the, the, the nature of the appliances that they have. There are a lot of, and, and by the way, that's where a lot of folks in a lot of retirement communities, this is exactly who is living in those retirement communities. It's people who moved out of their house and typically moved to a retirement community or to, that is closer to, to their children because they really love Frank and Mary and, or uh, Peter, Paul and Mary Jr. but you know, they don't wanna live with them all the time. So those are all possibilities. Finally, <clears throat> renting. Now, at this moment you're saying, oh, renting. We saved our whole lives. We own our own house. We paid off our mortgage. You know, why would we ever wanna rent? Well, the reason is because you're 80 years old. You don't need that house anymore. You know, the goal of your life isn't to just, you, you don't live for the house. The house is there for you. You're not there for the house, right? So it may very well be that your most sensible alternative at this point, right, is to sell your house and rent. And it may very well be that when you actually look at the, you know, the cost of maintaining the house versus the cost of renting, you're gonna be better off renting, right? So you wanna be considering, you know, just, just plain old renting. Um, you wanna consider a senior housing. And then finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about assisted living. First of all, senior housing. Um, a lot of people think, you know, they're in the community, they're not making that much money, oh, they can qualify for senior housing. Go check the waiting list before you think, e e even if you're not thinking of moving now, right? Because most communities now, the waiting list to get into senior housing is between two and 10 years. Now, one of the reasons for that was that, that not that long ago, there was a, a state regulatory change that basically said that even though, for even in communities where, where the locals, um, people who, been, who are living, had been living in the community for, for some time before, have a, have a special option, that option gets preempted by seniors from anywhere around the state who can show that they're homeless or on the verge of homelessness. But as a result, that has pushed up everybody's waiting list. So you really wanna check that out. You wanna check out apartment size, Apartment sizes in senior housing are usually pretty small. Um, when, if you're in senior subsidized, standard, the standard kind of formula for subsidized housing is that you're paying a percentage of your income, and if you have other assets, then the, the, they evaluate how much you have in those assets. They impute an interest rate to those assets, uh, and they add that to your income. And so, and so suppose you have assets like Frank and Mary of $400,000. Suppose the imputed interest rate is 3%. That means they're gonna impute that you have four times $3,000 uh, $3, or $12,000 in extra money. They're gonna charge you a third of that total amount. So you just wanna know that kind of going in. Um, but, but in that case, if you give away your money uh, there is a look back period regarding that giveaway, but the look back period is only two years, it's not five years. <clears throat> look at an apartment. There are a ton of apartments out there. By the way, there are also a lot of just rental houses now. That's been a big change, certainly since we were growing up. I can show you neighborhoods in my community 
where 30% of the single family houses in these older subdivisions are now being rented out. Um, so you, you may want to look at that, but just also look at an apartment um, and look at something that's like on the first floor, make sure that you're not walking into more trouble than you left. The nice thing about an apartment gives you more flexibility than a house, right? That if you decide that apartment isn't working, it's easier to move. You say to yourself, oh my God, the rents are going, but what if the rents go way up? Well, at least right now, in 2022, my pre strong prediction is those rents are gonna be coming down a lot over the next two to three years as this housing market bubble starts evaporating with, with ra rising interest rates. So, but the point is certainly there is that risk that there's, going to be, that there's going to be a change. But just think about it, now you've got all this money in the bank that had before been stuck in this house. So you really wanna think about that. Finally, <clears throat> there is assisted living. And I know that the immediate reaction to folks, there, there are a number of kind of immediate senior reactions to different things. To assisted living, it's like, oh, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. Because they'll, they'll say, oh my God, you know, this is gonna cost me a ton of money and you know, I'd rather just stay in my house. Well, the key to this, like with so much uh, elder law uh, uh, planning or elder planning, is don't just assume this stuff, actually do the numbers. So uh, do the numbers, shop around, see, without even thinking about price. Go to see the assisted livings in the area where you'd wanna be, because you probably don't wanna be like in the middle of nowhere, not knowing anybody, right? But so there are, there's kind of a, an area where you'd want to be, go see them. See if there's a place that you say, wow, that'd be really great. And then do the math. And then do the math, all right? Don't, don't walk away from these things before you've even kind of tried it. And for many of these places, you can actually try them out. Many assisted living communities, you can actually go in for, they have some units that you can take for like 30 days or 60 days to see if, if, you're, if you're really gonna like it. And even if you, you don't want to do that, you can actually go in and, 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 and buy in, or, or buy in, start renting at an assisted living community, don't sell your house yet, and see whether it works. If it does work, then great, then sell your house, right? So, briefly though, on the numbers. Now you wanna evaluate, look at your house right now. What are you paying right now in your house? Well, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm comparing them to my wife and I, right? And these are pretty close. So your house insurance, your house taxes, there's upkeep, there's plowing, there's all this other stuff. Say that that all adds up to $800 a month, all in. <clears throat> your utilities, I know these are our utilities, it's about $800 a month, all in, right? We figure out the heating and the air, you know, we get air conditioning and stuff, but then food. I know that that's pretty close, about $800 a month, all in, to feed two people. Um, so, so at, and then figure that you're gonna do, you know, you're gonna have some fun, right? You're gonna drive around a little bit. You know, you have a car, you've got cost of that car. There's eating out, there's Dunkin' Donuts, a regular for me, right? Figure that that's another 800 a month. So now you're, you're spending $3,200 a month. Um, remember Frank and Mary's income? About $3,000 a month. So their net subsidy that they're now providing is about $200 a month. Now look at assisted livings, the typical assisted living. This is gonna vary by place. It's about $6,000 a month, which means for Frank and Mary, they're gonna be spending $3,000 a month, right? Because remember, their income from pension and social security is, is uh, 3, 000, another $3,000. So, so their assets are $800,000. Um, their needed subsidy is $3,000 per month. So Frank and Mary, who are 80 years old, this all works fine for another 22 years. 22 years, right? If you're, on the, if you're on the islands, because you got a more valuable house, it's 33 years. So don't think that you can't afford this option. Fine, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip over these, these are fairly short. There are, there are some, also some subsidy options that are available when you're in, in assisted living. Uh, if you need a lot of care, if it can be demonstrated that you need a lot of care, you may be able to actually deduct some of your rent uh, as a tax deduction. There may be a benefit for you called the aid and attendance benefit that is a, a, available to veterans, some veterans and, spou and their spouses and widows. And finally, there's also a program called the Frail Elder Waiver, which is a pretty detailed matter and I'm not gonna get into it now. Finally, <clears throat> if you're Frank and Mary in this age, you wanna make sure you can qualify for mass health if you need nursing home care. Briefly, if you're Frank and Mary and you've got those assets, Frank and Mary on Metro West, those are your assets, um, it, it, and you need to qualify for Mass Health, and they're both alive. 
If Mary needs to qualify, she needs to show she has less than $2,000 in countable assets. Frank can own the home, no matter what the equity, can have up to $131,000 in other assets and can have unlimited income. And so Mary, if she's in the nursing home, can, at the last minute, simply transfer all the assets to Frank. Frank can keep the house. Frank can keep up to $131,000, use the rest to buy a very specific kind of annuity. The day after he does that, all the assets are protected. At that point, Frank can change his will to say that if he dies, all the assets are going to go in trust for Mary, in which case if he dies, all the assets are still protected. If Mary is alone because Frank has died, then Mary, on the other hand, has to look ahead. She has to look ahead, and if you're 80, you need to look ahead. Give away your assets and wait five years. If you want to protect anything, give them away and wait five years. You can put it, you just give them to your children. You can create an irrevocable trust. You should talk to your elder law attorney about that, but that's always an option. Finally, remember in all of this, the goal of life is to sleep well at night, right? If you're 80, though, and you're in a, in a house situation that is really, maybe, you really may be at risk in that house, then you may be staying up at night worrying about that. So that may be the time that it's time to look for all one of these options. Um, I really appreciate your uh, watching. If you have any questions, you can, uh, you can go to Elder Law, Frank and Mary, and you can find these shows. You can always call me anytime. Uh, I look, hope this was helpful for you, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the, uh, in the next seminar. Thank you very much.